Welcome to 9am to the 9am Board of Select Meetings for this Monday, April 15th. Uh, we'll start this meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Um, so we're going to start off as normal with the approval of the manifest and the, the payrolls. Um, anybody have any questions? I was fine with them, but I did have a question. I saw that we just did an oil change on the 2020 cruiser. Is that scheduled for swap out soon? As far as the trade? I think um, Fawn is just waiting on the numbers to be firmed up for the trade value. Okay, but it's still in rotation. I... And then our, the new cruiser that she's planning to purchase this year, um, as approved in the operating budget, is ready to be delivered at any point. So I think that's the only thing that they're waiting on. It's okay. ready to be delivered when? It's, re it's ready to be delivered at any time. Okay. It's in and available. It's just a matter of waiting on that trade value. So I'll have to get an update from her. I know she was working on it at the beginning of last week. Yeah. I just, I'd have to double check the date, but I just saw us doing an oil change on the car. And yeah, it was, it was like, like 90 bucks or something. I right. remember seeing that too. And I was kind of like, ugh. Huh? <laughs> so you, you kinda, even by the time it comes <laughs> in and gets equipped and everything, it's still going to be probably at least two months. Maybe, unless it's an immediate swap. But anyway, for the accounts payable and the payroll, I make a motion to approve the accounts payable and the payroll, the accounts payable, of 417 2024 and the payroll of 418 2024. I second. So we have a motion and a second. Roll call vote. Aye, John Decker. Aye, John Warren. Aye, Tim Gabriel. Aye, Matt Sherlin. Okay, we'll go to minutes. Do you guys want to do the. Uh, we'll start off with the minutes for a 3 4. So yes. Three of us are here for that. Great. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion. At the same time. I'll make a motion to, let's see, what should we have? I think I'd already seen them, but I just want to make sure, John, you were on the three, four, right there. One, two, three, yes. Make a motion to approve the public and non-public meeting minutes for three, four, 2024. A second. We've got a motion and a second, roll call. Hi, John Warren. Sorry. Oh, John Decker abstain. Hi, John Warren. Hi, Tim Sorry, Gabriel. Hi, Matt Sherlin. <laughs> okay, I've got those. And then I will make a motion to approve the minutes. Looks like we got everybody. The uh, work session minutes for 320 and the non public minutes for 327. Aye, second. Um, you have something? 327. I think I, I omitted the 327 work. Is the public the, minutes as well. So it should be. Uh, there was I, one 320 work. work session and the 327 non public. And, and, and it should be third, 327 work session as well. Do we want to? Okay, it wasn't on the agenda, right, but so we the, can say it. The 327 non public. Okay. I had one correction. It should say John Morin instead of just John. <laughs> Just <laughs> Oops, upside down. Of course, those are the ones that don't have line items. In the discussion? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so oh, we'll yeah, add... we have to be clarified about that. Yeah. Since there's yeah. now two of us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll add more in into that third yeah. sentence, or third paragraph, rather. Did you have any other changes for that's either all work I, session? That's it. Changes. That's it. All right. So, all right, just, I'll make a motion. What you want to amend your motion just to for the three twenty, and then we'll do the three twenty seven separately for public and non public. Okay. I make a motion to approve the Nottingham Select Board work session for uh, Wednesday, March twentieth, twenty twenty four. Meeting minutes. I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor? 
Hi, John Decker. Hi, John Warren. Hi, Tim DeBrio. Hi, Matt Sherlin. All right. I make a motion to approve the work session public meeting minutes for 327 and the non public meeting minutes of 327. With that one amendment. With the one amendment as discussed. All right. I'll second. Uh, motion and a second. Roll call. Hi, John Decker. Hi, John Warren. Hi, Tim DeBrio. Hi, Matt Schroen. And if anybody's curious, these work sessions that we're approving these minutes for were the uh, business that we were taking about to get our budget in line with the default budget. And Tim, John, Steve. All right, we have enough. We can get these ones out of the way, too. Great. All right. And did you have anything for these ones? I didn't. I wouldn't catch the John and John part, so. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll make a motion to approve the select board meeting minutes of 4-1 and the non-public meeting minutes of 4-1. Um, well, just for the public meeting minutes, from line 296 to line 297, that's the one where there's a gap. Or it, <clears throat> right? The um, line 297 actually carries forward from the March 18th. It was like a copy and paste from the March 18th meeting minutes. So, um, so I, I almost wonder if maybe the tail end of the meeting prior to you going into non-public session might be missing some content here. So I'd like to go back and review okay. the video. So um, I guess it I might be better off to table these for right now. That's fine. Just the non, the, just the regular ones? Just the regular yeah. session. All right, so we'll table those. I guess that did sound funny when I was reading it. All right, I'll go back and make the motion to approve the non-public meeting minutes of 4-1. I'll second. Motion to second. Aye, John Decker. John Warren abstains. Aye, Tim Gabriel. Aye, Matt Sherwin. Get rid of some of that. Okay, going to committee reports. Um, we had a planning board meeting uh, last Wednesday. I'll start there, whatever. Um, we are going to have another meeting this Wednesday. We meet every two weeks. Uh, public is always welcome to attend. Uh, last meeting was about uh, voluntary lot mergers instead of unmerging, which is pretty rare. I haven't seen one of those. Uh, in about a Cover. but that was on over near North River Lake uh, which is good to see and then we had another case that was over on Tuckway Lake about um, a gentleman was adding to his lot by buying a section uh, piece of land from another abutter to make his lot still non-conforming but less non-conforming so <clears throat> which is always what we're trying to do make lots bigger uh, so that was and then we did have a we will have a a work section work session for this upcoming Wednesday um, we're using it as a work session because we have a lot of new members and it's going to be a meeting where we're going to go over a lot of things we're going to talk probably about uh, impact fees um, and how we're allocating those out now and whether those need to be changed um, go over questioning and learning for the board members uh, for what they have on situations and what we've been dealing with nothing will be discussed per case as we can't discuss cases because uh, they're not on the agenda and they're not the meeting um, and we're going to do some other you know planning to see if we can get a committee together to for the master plan so again, it's an open meeting for anybody that wants to attend but it's a work session meeting <coughs> so there is nothing on the agenda as towards things to be voted on per like lot developments or anything like that so but there's a lot of uh stuff going on with the planning board in the future too with future developments uh the smoke street development is all set to go they're going to start cutting uh that lot those lots out <coughs> uh the fell zone one on the 17 lot on uh 156 across nottingham sand and gravel uh that is still in the preliminary stage did a did a site walk and um, the uh, conservation community and other committees have brought up attention towards the habitat uh, for people to look at. 
because the river is not too far from there, far enough away for the development to happen, but yet still definitely a different uh, wildlife area. So there'll be probably more discussion. So it's not like it's going to be approved anytime soon, but if you're interested in that, that's something for people to see. And budget committee. Did you, uh, just did you guys get? Are you fully up to quota? Did you oh, fill yeah. all the open positions? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. It's good to see the people that came out. And again, it's um, yeah, it's going to be. I think productive. as long as the people stay on the board, you know, they do the the time, and it'll be good. You know, I think there's enough help there, and um, Ed's good with all the information that he has. You know, for the years of doing it, so we should be able to be, you know, good at guiding people on um, information that they need. So, <clears throat> but we'll see. Right now, there's not too many subdivisions in front of us, so that's that's good. You know, because they take the longest. But we'll see what happens. Um, Back to you on budget. Budget committee will be meeting on Thursday at 7 p.m. Uh, should be a quick meeting. Um, as of yesterday, there was nobody that had submitted their names for the open budget committee seat um, at this point. So, um, but that's one of the items that's on the agenda is to vote in a, a new member to replace the open seat. That is the purpose of the meeting. Isn't it, it is, and then to review the meeting minutes from the last meeting and set the and set the meeting schedule for the remainder or the start of the year, I guess. And here. you're still not going to be able to make it? I will not be able to. So make I will it. be attending in your spot. Thank you. Not a problem. Again, for anybody that can't make any meetings or any committees like that, just let me know. I'm, fortunately, I <laughs> probably will be available to, to get to those, so uh, I don't mind. It'll probably be the shortest budget committee meeting of the year. So uh, it doesn't go to 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'll be quite happy to hear. <laughs> so, But I think there are some people out there that just haven't filed that are just going to show up at the meeting. Um, and they'll do like a three minute presentation. That's how it was done in the past. Uh, nothing for CIP? Nope. Uh, are fields okay over there? We got two of the dugouts painted. The roofs are on, and so we're hoping to complete the painting by May 4th is the goal. So we'll see, it's a lot. I was over there a good part of the day on Sunday. Um, but we do have some volunteers, two of us out there on Sunday painting, but um, they'll be just about done. And then the um, benches should go into the dugouts around that same time frame. So we'll have fully functioning, which is fantastic because I don't know if you've noticed the field that we have out here. It's not in very good shape. It is not in very good shape and we're highly doubtful it'll be ready for opening day, but we'll see. Just need a lot of people to step up. So home plate disappeared during the flood. Floated away? Yep, it's gone. And then second base, uh, the cement anchor for second base was fully exposed. So it needs to be dug back in and reset. And then we need to have about six yards of infield mix spread out over there in the next 10, 14 days. So a lot to do. It didn't help that Sunday we couldn't, I mean, Saturday's field community cleanup day, we couldn't do anything because everything was so wet from Friday. So, but yes. Oh, at least we're not on a drought. <laughs> yes, this is true. So one thing, one of the things we are discussing is the potential of moving our opening day festivities for baseball and softball over to Marston, potentially. Um, we just have to talk to um, the police department about parking and safety because it's a lot of cars that would be over there and where to park them. So but that's very preliminary. We're hoping that in the next 10 days things will turn around. So we'll see. Good luck. Yes. You're on top of that. Let's see. So one thing I did want to talk, I know you, I was not here for the committee assignments. Um, I don't know if you'd want to swap recycling for rec at all, just because I, sure. I'm going to be working with the rec department quite a bit over the course of the next year to figure uh, Marston out. There was the great thing about being at the fields is that you have a lot of people that stop by and chat. So there's like three or four people that stop by to chat and I got their information because we do need to uh, reinvigorate that committee if people want to continue to um, have pickleball courts, basketball, whatever it might be, if we want to continue, we need people that want to fundraise and focus on that. So um, there are some people that are interested. So I'm happy to sort of get the committee back going. I think that's wonderful. I have a passion for the, the recycling center. 
<laughs> okay, maybe we should switch somebody else. Yes. John's gonna show up there with a receipt pad. All right, ten bucks to get in. Not yet, but we'll figure that out later. I, like I said, I mean, I'm happy to keep the recycling center. I just, um, I, at the same time, I'm not sure if it makes sense for you to have the rec where I'm no. in contact with them constantly yeah. at this point. So, that's, if you're going to take it, a better interest in that, then that's the right thing to do. So, thank you for stepping up and taking that. Yeah. All right. Um, anybody else have anything? Um, I did meet with Steve after our last meeting. He did do the swale, and it looks like, he, well, we talked about the swale thing, and he, it looks like he had done it. So I don't know when that stuff is supposed to be delivered for the scout project. Um, I know when I had spoken with Ben Bartlett before the last nor'easter we got, yeah. they were planning on that week, but it was tentative yeah. on the storm. So. <laughs> I'll touch base with him and just see if he has any updates. But I believe the what it, what material they were going to be bringing in, which was pretty much the the trees and the bark mulch for that center island, I believe the intent was to just put them in that island so it shouldn't inhibit any parking spaces or anything along that line. Oh, one thing too. Sorry, but going back to the planning board, we will be talking about fees. Uh, and going back over that because one of the issues we had was when we told them that we weren't mailing the packets out wasn't how the fees were distributed you know for what people are paying for uh, the developers are paying for what they're what we're getting as members for you know packets and stuff like this and to make sure that the town isn't putting any of the bill for the developer you want to develop in Nottingham you can pay for it that's how I feel but mm -hmm. We'll have that discussion also in the workshop. Mm -hmm. Ed Veal also reached out to me um, with that proposed idea. He gave a couple of towns as examples. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just going to put it out to New Hampshire Municipal as far as the uh, the proof of mailing for the notices. Yeah. Um, he, he found a cost savings measure. If we can get away with just doing a certified mailing um, or, you know, like a validation receipt rather than the, the certified mailing, that would be a huge cost savings. Well, one of the points the guy brought up, which was good, instead of actually doing a certified mail where the homeowner had to actually sign for right. it. So it's a receipt requested. Yeah. Right, but that yeah. by statute, what it says is that as long as we give it to the post office and the post office signs off that they received everything from us, that they're now responsible. So we've fulfilled from the RSA our duty is by getting it to the post office so that they can do their job. So then that cuts off. So instead of like seven dollars or nine dollars of certified, now you can get it done for like a dollar. Mm -hmm. So something for uh, savings. But we got plenty more, a lot of things going on. <clears throat> um, all right, we're going to move into the town administrator's report. Okay. Um, I apologize for not having a formal report in front of you. Um, just for announcement purposes, uh, we were able to fill the administrative assistant role. Nancy Reese uh, joined us today. Today was her first day. And, um, you know, I just encourage everybody to come in and introduce yourself to her. She is a, she grew up in Nottingham and she lives in Deerfield. So um, she's obviously familiar with the town for the most part, but she'll be adjusting to her new role and will be acclimating her to the position. Um, and also, starting today, we had two new members join our highway department, uh, John Blake and Chris Merrigan. So the highway department is fully staffed with four full-timers and our full-time highway director. Um, kind of subbing off the highway department, the 2016 cruiser that they've been using as kind of the public works director vehicle just, you know, to transport back and forth. That had a recall, um, so it went over to the dealership only to find that it has aged out and it's exceeded the mileage for any of the warranty repairs to be com completed on it. Um, but while the vehicle was at the dealership, it was making all kind of, or on the travel to the dealership, I think it went to Concord, uh, it was making a lot of strange noises and it's now being towed back to us because the front end is getting ready to fall out of it. So. Um, it's one of those situations where, you know, is it worthwhile repairing? We do still have the F-350 that we had transferred over to the recycling center that had about a two to $3,000 repair that we opted not to do. 
Um, so the question is, is, you know, do we invest the money in trying to repair the old police cruiser that we're using, or do we put the money into the F-350, or we, do we just continue on with the big trucks and the utility truck that we've purchased? Can they make it work with what we have? Do they need the extra vehicle? It's, it's convenient. I think they can probably make it work without, but I don't know for how long. I mean, so what they were doing is they were using that vehicle, like if they were screening sand over the Smoke Street pit rather than driving one of the big trucks over there and having that tied up well over there, that was just a vehicle where they could do short commutes like that and not have it tied up. Um, obviously, we don't have the budget in the repairs and maintenance end of it, so it would be something that if we were to consider doing any type of repair, we'd probably have to outsource to those additional highway block grant funds, but whether or not that's something that you see as an expense that should be used, those funds should be used for, it's, it's really a matter of... So I, the, the recall itself should have been done. There was, so there was a there was a laundry list of recalls, but the vehicle itself aged out and it had too much mileage. Like it, the mileage had been exceeded in the vehicle, so the warranty never the warranty recall never technically applied to it. I think there was it only one that they were able to complete. Yeah, because if it's a recall, it's supposed to be done to everything. Mm -hmm. But. But if, with, if, <laughs> but if it's that being towed take, on the way home, that's kind of irrelevant. But it, but it doesn't take care of the issue that there's front end yeah. issues with right. it that are rather significant. Uh, do we know what it would Steve be is to repair pulling, that? Steve is pulling together the cost to potentially repair that, but uh, preliminarily it looked like it was going to be cheaper to possibly repair the F-350 than go through the repair for this. How many miles are on it? I don't know. What year is it? 2016. 2016. You talking about the truck or are you talking about the... The Explorer. The Ford Explorer. <laughs> Truck's like an 11, I think. I think you're correct. The 350, 11. I think, was an 11. 2000. So that, I'm just... That was I'm, an old cruiser to begin with? Yes. It was. <clears throat> So I will get more information for that for you. Um, I just wanted to at least plant the seed and start the conversation. I'm not looking for a decision tonight, but um, again, not having a whole lot of money to work with on repairs and maintenance for that particular vehicle. Um, that might be, we might be down that additional vehicle. And the 2020 Cruiser, based upon the feedback we got at the yeah. work session, it's, didn't sound like it's something we want to put money into anyway. Right. Right. Um, on a positive note, we did a, in the leach field at the library, they put in a new pipe um, just to kind of divert the pipe that's clogged over there, which put the leach field in failure. And that seems to be working as a temporary measure right now. It's reduced the number of pumpings we were having to pump their holding tank on a regular basis, um, as you'll see in the invoices. So. Um, Dougie Smith has been checking it weekly and he has not had to pump it since they've changed that pipe. Now this is just a temporary repair. We will still need to replace the leach field, but as of right now, we don't need to jump into that potential $15,000 cost to do so. It's a Band-Aid fix for right now. Um, well, that's something where the Band-Aid fix is something that I don't think we should be, I mean, Let's keep it on top agenda. Right. We've, we've, right we've band-aided things over the years, oh, a lot of years in this town, still, and that's why we're in such disarray on a lot of it items. It still so. needs to be replaced, but what it's doing right now is it's solving us from having the additional pumping costs on a regular basis. Right. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. That gets us a workaround until it can get repaired. Correct. But well, I just don't want to think people that says, oh, because we yeah. did this, we're no, not going to repair no, it. No, it's not. Right. It's not fixed. It's functioning yes um, the playground equipment installation did not happen this Saturday <laughs> uh, 
Um, I'm sure somebody else can report better than I can, but we're <laughs> either without the correct plans or the correct pieces, but the company is coming out, Uteleplay is coming out with representatives on Friday to do the install, um, a, a peace offering, so they are still looking for some help. I don't know if Courtney was able to, they were looking for two to three volunteers to help the company, just give them some additional manpower. So that's going to take place on Friday. So hopefully once we get that installed, we'll get the bark mulch continue to spread and be able to reopen the playground area. But right now, um, Courtney has it caution taped off just because we don't want anybody to trip and fall and get hurt. In the Do trip. you know if what we dug on Saturday is going to work for what they're doing? Or are we going to have to? I have not heard. I did not speak with the company. So I, I yeah. So what happened on the weekend is they got into it they got into the plans that we had and yeah. Tim was there he went through and it looked like we were missing two poles and a bunch of equipment and it just didn't make sense so we were going through and trying to build what we could knowing that we were going to contact them when we started making the holes for the ground it's, it's like not, building a Lego set with like incomplete like you know two-sided right. directions but you only have one side <laughs> that's what it felt like but then um, the area back there we ended up finding that where the play structure is going is the old leach field so instead of getting into like hard packed earth it was sand and small loose rocks it was the leach bed so it just the holes collapsed in on themselves so there was nothing that we were ever it was going to be like 10 times the amount of concrete because every time you try to make a 12 inch hole it just kept expanding out and out and it was collapsing so we had dug it out and we were making forms to get ready to pour concrete to tighten it back up um, Alan did reach out today. We are looking. I don't know if Courtney got the official new plans back in because I think we got to still run them down the hall. Um, but if we did get the new plans, we were going to see if that did fit to what we had put in for footings. And like the, the two structures didn't seem like they were that far off. So hopefully it, it should be pretty close. But there might have to be some realignment. Nothing we did over there is like that earth shattering. So okay. it would. We could pick it up and real align it as need be, but we're probably going to still have to use the forms because the earth is just not good, solid ground. So once we build the forms and pour the concrete, it'll be a lot more sturdy. That's great that they're going to come on Friday. Yeah, to have some people that have experience because, was because there's just different parts where we talk about this part below grade, but then it was like this part also below the foot of bulk march, but then there was like this imaginary this is the plane where everything needed to be on so it was like talking about three different planes and you had to figure out which one we were at and we have a gradient so it was getting overly complicated for a pile of volunteers really quick <laughs> and, and that's the way this company works i mean they are community build structures but i think normally you have representatives from the company there that's how it was at the school we had like there was four or five people from the school mm -hmm. I mean, from to the help guide there. through that process. but i know like talking to courtney on uh, saturday about it they they were going to charge for that. Mm -hmm. So, not now. No, yeah. not, no, no, not now. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, that was that part. Okay. So, so other than that, they had a very successful community cleanup day this past Saturday uh, for those that weren't able to attend. But I, I heard it was very well attended. Um, moving forward from our wonderful third winter that we got two weeks ago, <laughs> or a week and a half ago, whenever it was. Um, brush removal efforts are now underway with the highway department. They've rented a chipper for the week, and they're going they're going to address as many town roads as they possibly can to clean up some of the brush and everything that was left behind by the utility companies that are in the town's right of way. Um, so with that being said, any brush is that's chipped, it will be left behind the the chips will be left behind on vacant properties. Anything improved, it's going to be chipped into a truck and hauled off or uh, landowners can actually request that they be dropped at their property they just have to send an email into the town office with contact information um, and address information and they can do that because it will actually save them from having to haul the chips back to the smoke street pit so if we can potentially get rid of them on some of these roads where they can be utilized then that's great well how do people know where they are when they're doing it um just to, I think it's if it's on your property, you can say just leave it here. Yeah. Right, but how or, are we going to email if they don't? Well, we try. We put out the notice. Things last we work week. on a chip too might be calling saying, "Hey, when you're here," we'll be like, "Oh, sorry, not doing it." Yeah. Well, I mean, the worst case scenario, if somebody calls and requests and they're still somewhat in the neighborhood, and then that's still a closer location than 
calling it back to smoke street um so there is a notice on the website it's been up there since last week what Hopefully do we do when we put them at smoke street they're just going to sit there in the pit. yeah put it in the burn pit oh, <laughs> smoldering for weeks <laughs> Um, and I still have some research to do on the mailboxes. I have done some preliminary research from other towns, and a lot of them still utilize the post office for their mailbox because of safety and security, um, even though it's an offense to, um, for, for mail theft. You know, the general consensus is, is that it's an additional handling by the carrier. There's the potential when you have a street address that it could be delivered to a neighboring property. Um, and then the potential of not having it in a secured facility until it's collected by the appropriate person. I mean, if it's sitting out here, um, you know, you have the, the potential for ma um, mail fraud, mail theft, whatever it may be. So other than that, we are spending $82 per year for a mailbox at West Nottingham and at Nottingham. And then the police department has their own because they obviously deal with more sensitive information um, the police department it would not be an option for them to collect mail in a mail receptacle out here on location so again I will do some more research into it and we can ultimately decide it. I think if we had a mail carrier that was able to deliver it into the town office during business hours it would be ideal but yeah what what's the requirement to make that happen right. because obviously it happens at a lot of businesses mm -hmm. yeah why can't the mail guy or woman or whatever stop by here and walk in that's something that i have to research with the post office walk i haven't into, done that walk I haven't. Into the company i work for they walk into the lobby and drop the mail off right same with the company i work for so that's the the leg work that i still have to do so I will keep you posted on more updates with that. Um, Just one question, back to the storm damage. Yeah. So with, is Eversource and Hampshire Co-op, are they still be going to be coming back out or are they done? Um, they anything additional to? I think they still have to clean up around their lines. Yeah. Any brush that's around their lines, but any any of the stuff that is inhibiting, the, anything that's down and in the town's right of way is okay. technically ours now. Okay. And then uh, one of the other things that I was researching is the use of private email accounts for some of our various boards and committees. For a Nottingham-NH.gov email account, we are looking at $6 per month per email account. So the budget committee alone. That's nine additional people. It's $54 a month times 12 months. Obviously, we don't have the budget to support that. so. Um, I, think seven. I guess I guess the one thing that I would like Planning to say yeah. is that even though it's not a secure official email address I mean there really shouldn't be any email there shouldn't be correspondence going amongst committee members as official business anyways it should all be taking place during a meeting um, right it'd be like their minutes get emailed to them um, agendas meet, you know, basically meeting notifications mm -hmm. so. I think John discussed the process that he did for his budget committee he created a separate account to keep it separate from his personal email address and I think that's probably the the only cost-effective or yep. efficient way that we can do it for the time being and that's just going with a, um, a basic email account which would give them um, web access to the Microsoft 365 account if they needed like a desktop application to be able to do to access Outlook then it becomes more it's twelve dollars and fifty cents a month per account so maybe just encouraging having the chair of each committee encouraging people to probably do something similar to what John did to segregate those emails so they have just one spot for that yeah can't force them to do it right I also noticed this week on the website trying to download tax cards in lots it wasn't allowing me I don't know if anybody else had a problem you're probably being were you on the, um, the tax map site 
Yeah. It's been down for two weeks. I have a call okay. into CAI Technologies, who manages our, and it's not just us, it's every town that uses them. So I don't know if they're going through a mass update or if they've just shut the doors. I don't know. I don't have a response back. I do have inquiries into them, though. <laughs> Are we paying for that service? We do pay for that service. We pay for the online GIS access. They do our tax map updates. Can we put a notification on the website that it's currently? Yeah, I probably should. That's a good idea. Thank you. Um, and then while we're on the conversation of emails, you have a series of emails that I do not have outlined um, list by list, but there were several that you were copied on to see if there is action that is needed on them. We can go through them individually if you'd like. Probably would be a good idea to... Okay. Um, I have several complaint concerns that were received from J. Vilchok on, let's see, April 2nd regarding the building inspector showing up at incorrect properties throughout town. And what did Dale say? I mean, uh, I know Dale didn't mean to do it. He, he did not mean to do it. So there was an explanation behind the incident that happened um, two weeks ago. There was a mechanical inspector that called in an inspection at... Um, Said house. Yeah, it was... Cedar. Yeah, it was a Cedar Waters property. It was Lot 9 in Cedar Waters, which uses a Smoke Street address and um, Dale did not verify the information before he went, so. So, is that an issue for 911E, the 911E stuff? Um, no, because it wasn't, it wasn't a. Wasn't a Google It wasn't thing. a bad address. It was the way, the, the technician put it as lot 19 on Smoke Street, not 19 Smoke Street. He called it as 19 Smoke Street, but it was technically Lot 19 off of Smoke Street in Cedar Waters. He didn't clarify when he called it in, and it was a message that was granted. So it um, just sounds bad for like emergency access. It it does. <laughs> you know. So Cedar Waters doesn't have an official 911 address. They've been using 24 Smoke Street as their address, but it is not a collection in the 911 addressing system. They need to go in there and they actually need to identify all the structures within Cedar Waters and assign who, who? the 911 people addressing. The, the yes. state? Yes. And that's a project that the town would have to implement. We started doing some of that cleanup a couple of years back, but yeah. we only got a couple of the roads done. Mm -hmm. I, well, I know that there was an effort a couple of years back to do it. Um, so that was, that was the only incident that I had been made aware of. I got made aware of a second incident that happened last fall, but I just learned of it when this one came out. Um, so I've talked to him about that as well. I mean, we've, we've been through his inspection process. There were some things that we, we can clean up with time. It's just a matter of, you know, until an issue is identified, you deal with it then, unfortunately. So um, hopefully it was, it's not, it, it, the other question is, is that he is using his personal vehicle. We don't have a town vehicle to supply him with, mm -hmm. um, but he does come equipped with business cards and his driver's license for identification. Can we get him like at least a badge or something? Yep, that... yep. so that's what we talked about implementing. I think everybody that works in the town, whether it's the highway department, the recycling center, everybody should have a badge that identifies us as a municipal employee. So that's, that's gonna be something I'm working on. You know, also give people the name, mm -hmm. right there. For the record, you identify which Jay Wilchuk made that concern. Um, it's, can I ask for clarification? Does he go by a second or a junior? Because he does not. He goes by J. Jay. Okay. Okay, who was it? Junior, then, right? Junior. Right. Um, so, I am happy to respond to that for you if you have anything that you would like to add I, I don't necessarily know that there's anything further to respond other than you know the request is to address the issue with the building inspector which I have does, done does he wear hats no no 
I was gonna say, or some, some, can we get them something, some uniform type thing, something. a vest, a hat, whatever that, you know, is quick identification to say, oh, okay, you know, but, um, yeah. But he needs to be forward as far as like who yeah, he is, again, why he's there. So one of the incidents happened, I mean, you saw everything, one was a video, and he went around and looked at the house, obviously, you know, maybe he didn't know he was at the right address, maybe the number wasn't right on the house, did he do his due diligence, but he got the wrong information from the guy who was requesting the things, I mean, there was a lot of things that went wrong. Right. I, I mean, I'm not going to pin everything on Dale, I mean, Dale's been doing this for quite a few years for the town. And if you took out the number of how many inspections and how many things he's done and to how many times this has happened, I mean, we're at 99% or better that he's doing the, the right thing. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I understand the concern. I'm happy the people who brought it up to us, mm -hmm. we need to know these concerns when these situations happen. It's great to know. But do I think it's something where it's in a panic mode for us to change and do the wheel? I don't think so. That's no, I've idea. just I've encouraged him to make sure that if if nobody is at the property to leave his business card so they can at least know that he's yeah. been there. Cool. Um, and simple then also just that. right. exactly that's and then something yep. as simple as verifying the address against the permit. Yeah. But again, I've been seen by many houses which don't have numbers on it. And... Okay. Um, the second email I'll move on to is questioning the. Nottingham Fire Rescue Department bylaw changes, um, whether there was a bylaw committee in place, which there was, I'm waiting on the membership from Chief Curry, and they also need to sign uh, the bylaws as well. Um, that's what's stated, it's signed by the chief, the board of selectmen after the legal review and the bylaws committee. And there were, there were other questions about what prompted the changes to the bylaws. Do you have any comment for that? I think that would be up to that committee, really. Yeah. But it was all initiated by the fire department. I mean, the last yeah. time they'd been done is 2007. There was conflicts between the town policies and the bylaws, and then they were just out of date. One of the things that they brought up was that most departments have gotten rid of bylaws. The most of them are operating on like standard operating procedures and guidelines. I think most of the departments around us don't even have bylaws anymore. They were originally looking to just get rid of them, but we didn't have anything the next piece in place. So the meeting I was at, I just said, can you just fix these first, get the, the next piece in place, and then we can remove the bylaws for the department. I think most associations, um, which is like the fundraising arm and stuff like that, that those still use bylaws. So it's just trying to get them out of 2007 was the latest revision. Okay. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. Anything further on that one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the third one is regarding the concern about the integrity of the investigation that was completed. I have no comment on it, so. Uh, I think some of the questions were about processes that the investigator used, which it was an independent investigation that was completed. So the process by which she conducts an investigator is up to her, an investigation is up to her. Um, so I think, I think I can probably formulate response on most of these questions within this email um, and as far as the person responsible for the redactions uh, it was I who did most of the redactions so there were a multitude of reasons where redactions are made in government records most of which are outlined in RSA 91A colon 5 so uh, depending on whether it was an invasion of privacy or personal or confidential information that may have been disclosed I'd have to look back to that um, original correspondence that he's referring to to find out exactly what the reason was on that but I can respond to that anything further you'd like to add 
No, I mean, it's kind of hard to infer by what he meant by I was not part of the initial complaint. I'm assuming he just meant that I wasn't at the fire department, so he didn't have anything to add to the investigation. Okay. And then... But again, I'm assuming. I don't want to put words in somebody's mouth. Right. And then the last one was about a photo that may have been obtained from a personal laptop that might be at the department still. So... Did anybody call the PD if that's a crime? I'm sorry, did anybody what? Call the police department? Um, or... I actually contacted the police department because there were personal items that were taken out of the fire station and relayed to the appropriate owners. And the assumption was that this was one of the items, but it's vague. So they'll look into the report. It. Right, but I mean, uh, um, the other, the posting could be cyber, a cyber crime. You know, we have no jurisdiction over that. I, yeah, I would have to relay this over to Fawn to investigate. Please do. Or, or somebody else should have done that. I guess if there was a formal complaint, it should be made to the PD. I will refer that. And then just have her update with what's going on. Okay. All right. Um, do, 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 do. What else do I have for emails here? Um, I have a open request from Sandra Vilchok to unseal minutes from the non-public session held on March 20th of 2023. I have those earmarked for a discussion in non-public tonight. And there are some of these emails were just received today, so I'm not sure if you have had a chance to review them not or not. They weren't included in your advance meeting packet. Um, there's a grievance against the Nottingham Fire Rescue Department. inquiry to the grievance committee that I have to follow up on <clears throat> another follow-up to personal items that may be still at the fire department and am I missing anything so has anybody taken Jay back there to pick up his stuff or I don't not that I'm aware of. I mean, it, right, if there's still stuff outstanding that he has, that should have been picked up like a year ago. A year, right, a year ago. I, you know, it's. We're not trying to hold anybody's stuff. <clears throat> so if there's legal ownership to it, it should be returned. Mm -hmm. Can you? Should he just make an appointment? Yes. So yes, I can respond then to the individuals. Yeah, my curry contact or contact Matt or the deputy chief and then let us know what's gonna preside so that we can be aware of it. I'd rather not go have anything happen without us being in the loop. Okay. Um, I believe that covers that series of emails. That's all I have. Perfect. Any uh, update on the Town Beach access um, with the attorneys? It is in the attorney's hands. I've supplied her with the deed for the property, uh, the subdivision plan, because now there are multiple properties that are affected by that Town Beach access road. Um, and she is working on drafting the agreement that we can propose to the property owners. 
this is the agreement that we are allowed access, the town is allowed access over their property. Correct. From Memorial Day to Labor Day, stop. Correct. But then it's the maintenance piece. Right now there are, I think, five enormous pine trees that are have fallen across that road. Completely blocking the Completely beach blocking access. it off. Right now it's not even accessible anyway. They, the state can't even get down there to do anything with the dam if they needed to. Hmm. Well, the state probably has access no matter what. So what does the state do for maintenance? They probably should be maintaining it. Well, okay, I don't want to interrupt, but I want to unplug just one plug over here on the side. <laughs> Doug is being our audiovisual expert. Perfect. That's what I like. I have a loud buzz. Um. And I can't tell him it's on the Um, John, take your cell phone away from that. Is it my computer? Add it down here. Would that make a difference? It, I think. We're not is sure. It my computer. Oh, is it? It's not plugged in though, right? It's not powered. It's it's just on battery. Okay. It's on battery. <laughs> um, yeah. So this state has to get to the dam because they need to put make sure that they're controlling the dam. They've had to go there, so they must have walked in. They were there just a day or two before the storm came yep. in. Um, so I don't know if they take, if they should be taking responsibility for some of that maintenance. Because I don't know what their rule is for right to pass, but mm -hmm. they must have some right to pass as well. I will have to check with the Fernalds to find out because I, I think they might just have gate access as they need it, but I'm not certain on that. That is typically what they do. Sorry? That's typically what they yeah. do. They just have access to the both right. gates. Right, but. Well, one of the gates is gone. But. All right, so I'll reach out to Dawn and find out about that. Mm -hmm. Well, they could walk. Well, right. They but could you're walk, saying the state should, should, should clear the way. The state, yeah, the state needs need to get access, in there. Are they? That would give them the opportunity. They have to keep that thing maintained. Yeah. They pass enough off to the town. They can pick up. Perfect. It's a lot. It's a lot of damage over there. Yeah. Okay. The bus is gone. Good evening. Thank you, Doug. Maybe it was I think I think it was the, it's the cell phones you get to keep no it's the um it's just a power cord oh we were talking about radio frequencies and stuff we we met today oh. so one of the power cords is loose or something or no there's a power cord or? running and it can run interference with the microphones so we know, oh, 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 that like, was Doug Cummings I was just in he, he's a resident obviously Nottingham and he's a new member on the Nottingham planning board he has an extensive background in audio systems and thank you very much Doug he offered us assistance at the last planning board meeting. Uh, so I'm happy to see that he's followed through and the greatly appreciate his service. Mm -hmm. Thank you for volunteering. Yep. All right. So that should take care of the dam or whatever the beach. Well, I don't know if take care of it. It gets it started. Well, it, I mean, we're there's nothing else on that subject. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, they can't get down to even uh, clean up the beach to get it open and presentable for Memorial Day weekend. So it's something that we're going to have to address sooner than later. There might have to be another cleanup day for just designated for the beach for its opening this year. Well, I know the past two years, I think the Lake Association took a major role into that cleanup. So, mm -hmm. but. Things have pushed back and delayed. Steve Sorf's not running the chainsaw to cut those pine trees. Cleaning the beach is not cleaning the road. That's all. Yeah. Totally different. Right. Um, so, being that, we're going to head into the assessing part of our meeting. Um, we have quite a bit. Being it's that time of year. Uh, did everybody get to review? Did anybody have any questions as we go through these? The veterans tax credits are pretty. Extensive. Uh, I, I did yeah. have one question where I saw it was one residence. So the veterans tax 
credit is an individual credit, not a property credit. Correct. So it can be. If you have multiple veterans in one property, they it's okay. per the person. I didn't see that in the state paperwork, but I saw that the, I mean, the avatar guy knows the rules in and out and mm -hmm. he. Yeah, just because you have two veterans, so it means you get double the credit. Right. It, it does. does. No, it, it does. does. You do. And it, one of these is a double right. credit. That's why I was asking. It's per person. <laughs> it's per veteran. Wow. It's. Um, I, I thought it was one single household. And then my question was, do we have to, are those, are we, because I don't see them on here twice. Are we approving each one individually or are we here approving it per the lot? So that's what I'm, <laughs> I, this so is a segue question. The one that you're talking about in particular, I don't even think we're doing a reapproval. It's a matter of they've moved from one address in Nottingham to another. So you're not even doing an approval. It's already been previously approved. We're just updating the application to reflect their New current address. address. Okay. And okay, so it's not even on the list. No, yeah. it's not on the list because it's, it's literally just a matter of updating the application. So we're just signing the paperwork. Correct. We don't have to approve it. Yeah, it's already it was already approved okay. in two thousand twenty three. Never mind. And that answers. So I'll start with the one that we cannot approve. Um, and we'll, I'll make a motion to deny the veterans tax credit for and Tim verify my map five lot five. That one didn't meet honorable discharge. It was under honorable conditions, which is not per the state. I'll, I'll second. <clears throat> Motion and a second for that one. All in favor? Aye, John Decker. Aye, John Morn. Aye, Tim Gabriel. Aye, Matt Sherlin. All right. Um, do we want to lump these together at all? I think you can. Yes. Okay. Uh, make a motion to approve the veterans tax credits for map 15 lot 9 map 12 lot 14 dash 1 map 40 lot 1 dash 3 I second we have a motion and a second roll call I John Decker I John Warren I Tim Dabrio I'm at Sherlin and then I'll make a motion to approve the all veterans tax credit for map 42, lot 10, map 25, lot 16, dash 2 alpha, map 23, lot 10, dash 23, and map 15, lot 8. Aye, second. Motion is second. <laughs> Roll call. Aye, John Decker. Aye, John Morin. I Tim Dabrio. I'm Matt Sherlin. Make a motion to approve the service connected total disability tax credits for MAP 46, lot 7 2, and MAP 25, lot 1 5. A second. Roll call. Um, I John Decker. I John Moore. I Tim Dabrio. I Matt Sherlin. Make a motion to approve the elderly exemption tax credit for map 10, lot 6, and map 1, lot 189. Aye, second. All in favor? Aye, John Decker. Aye, John Warren. Aye, Tim Dabrio. Aye, Matt Sherlin. Um, I'm going to jump ahead to the religious ones. I had questions on the other one. So I make a motion to approve the religious exemption for map 43, lot 28, and map 4, lot 8. I second. Motion. So, wait, what? you said you had a question. I jumped ahead for the other, the okay. land use tax ones. Oh. We'll go back. Sorry, sorry. So this was the... Uh, religious exemptions? Yep. So this was... I thought that's the one you said you had a question on was the religious nope, one. I said so, I jumped ahead. <laughs> um, on the religious exemption, it talked one of them talked about the extra acres. How does that play in? So Eight. it's only approving that acreage of the actual so, lot for the building. So, it, the only, so land. it only approves it for that section. Right. Okay. So does the bill get separated or something or the assessed value will Okay. 
I, yeah, I just want to. He has to make I'm, an adjustment to the SSA. So, so that... a portion of it will be exempt from taxation, and then the rest of it will remain taxable. Okay, there you go. All right. The More tax card will probably there. show oh. a full value one, and then a yep. reduced value on the same card. If you, I think it's in the back of that packet. You'll see uh, all the wording. Okay. All right. But so yeah. So I, John Decker. Well, yeah. When for, you get there, right. Well, no, I thought that's the one we were probably oh, Okay, so you're okay. Yeah, yeah. You're already Sorry. there. <laughs> My bad. Sorry. Hi, John Warren. Hi, Tim Dabrio. I'm Matt Sherlin. This is to approve the religious tax exemption. Sorry. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So the current use one, is this just adding a two acres in the middle? Correct. So it's two acres. It's not in current use assessment right now. They're adding it to the larger parcel. Which one's the larger? Is it literally just landlocked in the middle that wasn't current use? I don't understand it because there's like a river that runs through it and it's just like a random two acre box, which he seems to be okay with. It's just weird how we got to this point that this random two acres it is It might just, have just been reserved at one point to for be- like a house lot? Right, and then they've chosen not to Cause it develop not. it. Okay. Because there was still Right, total acres and parcel, 40 already in current use. So it's just exactly two acres. So I was thinking they were thinking of building a lot mm -hmm. at one point. Okay. And then that would have been the road. So they're just, Everything if they ever go to same. then build at this point, they They'll would have, have to, to pay a land use change tax. Okay. Again. Because they paid it once. Yeah. Okay. So we're just approving putting that final two acres back into current use. Correct. Okay. So I can agree with that one. So I make a motion to approve the application for current use for map 44, lot seven. I second. Motion and a second. I, John Decker. I, John Moore. I, Tim Gabriel. And I, Matt Sherlin. And then this final one, is this two separate parts? Like how do we do? So you have to approve the land use change tax, which actually releases it at the registry of deeds. And then you're also approving the land use change warrant, which orders the tax collector to collect that 10% penalty assessment. All right, and the, but this has been hanging out there for a while and we just caught it. Is that how I read that? So there's an 18 month discovery period. Okay. Um, Sorry, there were so many packets. There it is. The, the town has 18 months to issue the land use change tax from when we discovered that a change was made that would disqualify the property from current use assessment any longer or a portion thereof. Okay. And then the front page of his material was six other lots of similar sales on how he got to the market value. So the land use change tax that you pay, the, the penalty assessment is based on the present day market value of that portion that's coming out of current use assessment. Okay, so it, the property is no longer continuous with enough acreage and sold. This one was just a lot different so than I've seen before. So if you have so. multiple parcels of land, if they don't meet the 10 acre minimum to be in current use, you can have several lots that make up that acreage. And if you have one that sells, changes ownership, it's no longer con considered contiguous. Right. So that's what prompts it to be disqualified from current use assessment. Are these the purchasers of a smaller plot or the people that had the bigger plot and cut it down? And Because usually if like you have 10 acres and then you cut it off and make like three lots through the planning board, as long as it's you're still supposed common, to be responsible. As long as it's still common ownership, it can, it can stay <laughs> that way. It's when the ownership changes. So they must have sold one of those So this one at 5.3, there's a lot at 5.1. I'm mean, again going back trying to remember this exactly, but chance I would hear was that a lot got subdivided on Stevens Hill Road. Yeah. The lot could have been consisted of twelve acres or whatever, and it was in current use, or it could have been fifteen acres. Who knows? And they cut off three acres and sold it because they'd have two hundred feet of frontage on the road, da da da, da in order to get the lot. Yeah. And they take that out since that was being that was part of current use. Since it's now taken out of current use, they put a subject value of what the land's worth. I did this because when I just did my house, same thing happened. And they, they look at the sale of all properties in town that were just lots or what lots are selling for. Hence is what you get number one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. It's like getting comps. It's exactly what they're doing. It's yeah. just comping it out. But is the person who cut it, I'm just asking, is this going to the right person? The person, the, the person who cut it, it's the owner of the property now. 
So it doesn't matter. During the sale, the current owner, who had the bigger parcel, who sub took off, could have paid it if they wanted to. Or they could say to the person buying it, you have to pay the fee. Okay. It's all so handled they the just, so okay. in this case here, they're quick, who knows what the deal was or how did it work. But the town's responsibility is to charge it to the current owner. The current owner wants to go back to the previous owner. That's up to them. That's yeah. totally on ours. That's all I was asking. Was, was it heading to the right person? And or? you can't get a CO unless you pay your lux tax. Oh, a certificate of occupancy. Correct. <laughs> Took me a second. So we've used a lot of acronyms. I was like, what? Okay. So I will make a motion to approve the land use change tax and the warrant for the land use change tax for map 46, lot 7 4. I second. And one more note on this it doesn't mean that they can't come in front of the board and object to what they feel the, if they feel that the value that avatars put on the property isn't correct. We could have an abatement for that. Just okay. That has happened too. Uh, but we got a motion in a second. I, John Decker. I, John Warren. I, Tim Debrio. I, Matt Sherwin. So that was the bulk. I would like to say that's the bulk of the um, credit and exemption application that we received today was the deadline. We got probably equally as many today. So we'll be seeing this series. Um, the assessor's not in again until the second Wednesday in May, so you'll get them for probably that following. So the first second meeting. Second meeting in May. Oh, the second meeting? Yeah. And they could be hanging out that far out? Yes, yep, so the application deadline is April 15th. Um, we try to get them applied to the accounts before the first tax bill goes out, for the first half tax bill, so that's usually like late May, so hopefully we'll get them all in before then. Okay. All right. Anything else from our board members? We will go as we always do. We will go to uh, any public comment. Are we going into non-public after? Yes. Do we have any action items? For there wasn't any list on the bottom, so that's why I didn't say anything. No, for the next meeting, anything that we were, the town beach or anything we need to re. I think that's just an ongoing. That's just ongoing. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you, Nottingham, for your time. Uh, we are actually going into non public. Oh. No. Yeah, I just had, I figured you'd just come up. I'm sorry. I didn't. Chuck, 106 Mountain Road. Do I have a time limit? No. Thank you. Three items. Number one is several meetings ago, I had requested the positions that are covered by a surety bond. I haven't seen that information. You don't have to answer it right now, but just put it back on your action items. Number two is at the last meeting, there was a statement that the fire department was going to work 42 hour full-time shifts. Mm -hmm. And I asked that the board brief the people of Nottingham, explain how that's gonna cover the 15,000 hours. That so it's not, um, I can update you on that. So it is 24 hour coverage per day will be covered. Uh, how that works over a six week rolling window. So it'll be some weeks they'll have more hours and then there's one week where I think it's one on, two off, one on, four off. So that makes one, two, three, four. That's a seven. I think that's an eight day rolling window of how it was supposed to work. So it's always rotating. One week, they'll only work 24 hours. If you do the math, it will average out to 42, but that still doesn't fit against the um, overtime. overtime policy on how it's written currently. So there still needs to be made a change there. So they're not working 42 hours. It will average out over their six week to be equivalent to 42 hours. So some weeks they will be working 48. Some weeks there'll be like one week in that rotation, I believe, be 24. 
I believe this was copied from several other departments. So two follow-on questions. Is this going to fulfill two full-time staff, six days a week, 24 hours a day? Yeah, I believe everything is filled all the way through the end of May. No, but is this scheme, gonna, this plan, this schedule gonna, gonna guarantee if the positions were filled that there would be two full-time staff on 24 hours a day, six days a week? Uh, I do not, there'll be per diem people in some spots or four full-timers. There'll, there'll be two people on per day. Big picture. Yes. And, and you go back and research this and do the math again. Yes. Six full-time slots filled with that yes. schedule. Is that going to fill six days a week, 24 hours a day, six, uh, two, two full-time? Yes. So one person's day starts on day one, yep. get a day on, two off. Somebody comes in on the next day, but there's always going to be somebody working one 24-hour shift, getting two 24-hour shifts off, working a 24-hour shift, getting four 24-hour shifts off. And there, there's enough people rotating through that there's going to be two people covered on each shifts, I believe, from what I understood all the way through. They're booked through May right now, the end of May. You, how many slots are filled? Are two, two people per day? No, no, no. How many slots, full-time slots are filled right now? There are four full-time slots. I believe somebody is finishing up the um, okay. test for the fifth slot. Regardless, when, they're, when you're fully staffed, this schedule is going to fill uh, fully staffed being six full-time positions, it's going to have two full-time people six days a week, 24 hours a day. Some of the days we'll have to use per diem if we only have six so that, people. That's, that's no, that, that it won't be, right? Is that correct? There will be two 24-hour shifts covered per day. By full-time staff? Some will be full-time, some will be per diem. We, it's still a hiring... It, Yes, the town originally wanted six full-time. Yes, right. I understand that, but we can't get six full-time people. We have more than enough per diem people that cover it at a lower hourly rate without benefits, so it's a benefit to asking, the town. What he's asking, I think, is once once it's fully staffed, right. will that cover the, the two We would still have to cover with per diem as we were doing beforehand, because so, Sunday then, was... Then the answer is no, that this 42-hour schedule will not fill six days a week, 24 hours a day, uh, Two people that you agree you're That's saying you have to augment them with with per diem the old schedule had to be augmented with per diem not six days a week and we don't want to discuss that right now That's for something else but it didn't it didn't that wasn't the plan i would have, I to, have to look at it because right now yeah. the way it was and it rotates through i don't think right there it's in progress right now yeah. originally it was six days a week 24 Two people on. So, That's what we were budgeted for. That's what the Warren article was for. Okay. Now this is not. This is just gonna, this is going to give less coverage than that fifteen thousand hours a year that was that was required. I don't know how it's going to provide less coverage. Just two people on for twenty four hours well, a day. Because now we're going to have to put per, per diem people in, which are being so, paid at a lower hourly rate. Uh, <laughs> well, the right. point was that they were supposed to be paid at a salary, and. I know that salary people don't work 40 hours a week. But we're not, we're not eliminating those additional positions. I mean, we're still trying to hire. We're still them. trying right, to right. fill it. So, but if we have six people, is it going to, if, if six people <clears throat> was to fill full time six days, is this schedule, this schedule is not going to be able to do it. But it fills, a sev it, it, it's confusing because it's going to give us the seventh day, right? So, which would have been per diem stuff anyway, right? For, I, 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 for the record, the original Warren articles funded six full time, <clears throat> working twenty four hour, forty eight hours a week. Okay, two on a, two on for six days. Mm -hmm. Sunday was a per diem day. That was built into the budget it was Sunday was a per diem day okay but uh, this 42 hour and is it, is it a, it's a true statement that it's going to give us something less than that and we don't need to get into the, the weeds I don't if, the 42 hours I think was if you looked at it from an hours averaging standpoint there are still people on for 24 hours a day two people on for 24 hours a day 
full I time need to look six at days a week. Because like, I think the, what we were presented yeah. with didn't include six full timers because that's not, not what they have. How about a chart to show the people of town sometime in the future and we don't have to argue well, this later? Sure yeah, because they 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 they're still working on it, right? Or what's the. It is in implementation now and it is fully booked through the every day has people on it. Because that email said it was still being. And the last I had talked, they had. It's all been booked out. That's what they told they were moving to. That's what they based their schedule, their their plan schedule. When they for the had month their April monthly meeting at that. April, and that's what it is. April through May, they're booked out. That's what it is moving forward right now. If it's possible, they can redact <clears throat> the name of who's working, so nobody don't care who's assigned to it. Just that what hours are filled, and what hours are per diem filled. Okay. And then once an example of it. Once it's fully staffed first with six. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Follow on question. And I didn't mean to ask this until now. You said this, this 42 hour scheduling, is it going to involve overtime for a normal work schedule? Are there... Their original intent is that it would not because they were going to hand in their time sheets and over an average of six weeks would only be working 42 hours. It still goes against the personnel policy. We'd still have to change the way that that is worded and how our billing structure is worded for overtime in the personnel policy. Correct. For over 42? Over 45. Over 45. 45. That's, that's okay. Yep. Follow on question. I believe uh, there was a 91A request also submitted. That in the email series? Correct, and I'm working on that. It wasn't brief at all in your report though, what, what the requests were. Are you talking about the, the, um, the non-public session for March 20th? I'm talking about the record for the release or the, uh, uh, the unsealing of that non-public. There was a request for a log of what dates and a record of the vote of the board for unsealing Okay, those, those minutes have not been unsealed. Okay, okay. They have never been unsealed. They have not been unsealed. They've they were, never been they unsealed. They were sealed. Oh. The never been unsealed. Be clear. Okay. That the dates that he's going to pr provide right now that are the same ones that Mark, before we say have sealed or unsealed, before we get ourselves, make sure the dates that you're asking are... What March are the 20th, 2023 minutes that have been... 20th and 23rd. Nope, 20th. Just the 20th, Just March 20th, 2023. 20th, 23rd, okay. Sorry. I'm looking for the record. Well, there was a 91A request put in. It was just received this morning. Okay. And I will have to look into it, but to my will you, knowledge. Will you let us know what, the, what, was, what, was the, what was that request? The request is a complete list, all dates, Board of Selectmen vote taken, results to unseal and reseal and purpose for unsealing non-public meeting minutes for March 20th, 2023, provided to the undersigned electronically within timeframes of RSA 91A is the exact request. So the way that I read that is you want the vote taken for if those minutes had been unsealed and then resealed. And what the purpose was for unsealing them. Okay. So that will be supplied as a 91A request. Thank you. A response to so that. So your main question is why we unsealed them and resealed them. When, the results of the vote, and why. Right. Yes. I'm just being clear that. Yes, that's, that's exactly right. Thank you. Sandra Vilchuk, 106 Mountain Road. I have a concern that this board is not concerned for the safety of a member that they're employing. When you allow people to walk around with unidentified markings, there could be serious repercussions, especially in this day and age. 
So I highly recommend sooner than later that there is some way to provide Mr. Sylvia with some sort of identifying marker, whether it's a, a, a vest, a coat, a hat, a, an ID. Um, you had mentioned, I believe it was you had mentioned business cards. Uh, had he left a business card at either of those residents on those days that were mentioned? He had left a business card? Uh, no. I, I don't know about the, the prior one, the one that was just reported from the fall. Um, I, I do know that a business card was not left at the one from a week and a half ago. And you said he has business cards? He does have business cards, correct. Okay. So that's the expectation? Yes. Is to leave is a business he, card at any address? If he visits and there is nobody at the property, then he is to leave a business card to notify or to alert them that he was there at the property. Okay. All right. And we just spoke about earlier about making badges. That was part of our conversation. Yeah, I was here. Okay. I'm just picture. I'd like to thank Mr. John Decker for bringing some common sense to this board as well. He spoke out in that fashion, I think, in my experience, in the past year that, that um, I've been aware of issues in this town, um, just asking some questions that were pointed and very appropriate. So I'd like to thank Mr. John Decker for that. I'm he's doing his homework. <laughs> he's doing his homework as far as I know. And he's trying. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and there was another email and I'm not sure um, that you did not mention. It was a check that was made out to me. Mm -hmm. Did you have that email in I that cadre? That of, okay. We didn't mention that. We did not mention that. Um, if you would like to mention it, we can go there. Well, I'm just looking for if there was an update because I didn't see anything in my... Uh, to be honest with you, the emails that came in between yesterday and today, I've not had a chance to fully give them my attention and look at the response. I know that you did have some concern about um, knowledge of whether a check would be paid to an election official who may be assisting with stuff like the, um, the AccuVote machine check. Well, the, the previous correspondence, I, I don't know if this microphone is on or not, but the previous correspondence, do you have that email there in front of you? The one that I responded to Correct. you on the check? What yes. it was for? Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. So I'm looking at it right now. The check that was issued was for my time at that um, verification of the AccuVote machine is what you responded to me. Correct. And, and that was it, we were done. Um, I'm, I'm wondering, um, it was just written out, just there was not, no deductions or anything. I'm, I'm wondering like, where does that fall in under, but that this would be the previous thing. And if that's commonplace, that would be more like a reimbursement check to me. Yeah. Um, you should get a 1099, I think. Not but if it's under, not a, if it's under a certain amount. $600. So but election workers, normally it's $600. I think this town is actually elected for a higher amount to not be 10 Okay, I'm, I'm just, you know, it's something that just appeared in my mailbox, so I'm totally not aware of, of how that is handled. But there are some follow-on questions, so I'll give you a pass, and I'll expect to hear back from you. Okay, fair okay. enough. Um, speaking of uh, the mail, you know, um, the issue that you had brought up about the um, mail, I wish that there was a way to verify that mail received at residence is the proper. Um, I, I'm not sure that the um, discussion that was made earlier regarding um, perhaps there'll be an issue with bringing mail here as well. Um, I don't know. I really think it's the way to go. If we can get that carrier, and I don't see why not, because like John Decker said, I am aware of deliveries in entire boxes being made to businesses or municip municipalities, maybe not so much, but, um, and since I think this whole entire board has mentioned other circumstances where they have other experiences, you know, we seem to be using that. Um, so maybe. I think if we have the option of having a mail courier hand deliver it into the building to a person rather than in a secured mailbox outside, 
Yeah. I think that, that would was be a great option. That was absolutely what, what I felt. Yeah, that was absolutely but what I felt should be But one of the options that got presented at the last meeting was to do almost like an apartment complex type lock box where you could have multiple boxes for various departments. Yeah. And, I, yeah, obviously the best thing would be for them to bring it in. Right. But, um, you know, I, yeah, if there's issues with people are concerned with it even being in one of those apartment type things, then we need to figure that out or, you know, potentially we have some mail delivered here and save some postage box, but we can investigate that after we figure mm -hmm. out what our options are our, from our right. local carrier. Right. So one, one final question. Um, this is specifically for um, John Morin because John, you made the statement. We were talking about the um, scheduling of employees at the fire station uh, regarding full-timers and um, per diem members. And you had sent something about a schedule with people's names and you suggested that schedule for people's names, you know, so you can see it, so you can actually have it um, in hand, how this, you know, is going to work out. And you said, um, yeah, that's fine, as long as we have that names redacted. Well, what if the people switch shifts? It's kind of a new point to have people, I mean, just be full-timer one, full-timer two, full-timer three, yeah, full-timer four. Sure, that works. Per diem okay, one, well, I'm the, my, my senses are high into the term redacted. I was just going to ask you what was your reason for redacting names, because these are well, town yeah. employees, right? Right, but if the schedules change, people change. It's just okay. making sure the question was to make sure that how the schedule worked and how the hours were going to unfold and to put it in a form of things. So it is. That might go forward. That might be the one that stays there, and those are the things that change, and it could be that game scheduled for three years from now. It is a public knowledge and a public rep record, the roster of the fire department oh, the and what the could people be who's there, made. Who works there. Is that correct? So if that's requested, those requests should be fulfilled. Correct. Correct. And the roster is posted on the town's website. All the members of the Nottingham Fire Department's roster? Correct. And what about per diem members? Um, I would have to look. Yes, Mr. Sherlin, you're I'm shaking sure. your head. I don't know. Oh, uh, okay. I'm saying because they, I don't know if I, it, I was that's given, in yeah, flux a little right. bit. Right, I was given an updated roster about a month ago and I put that up, so I can't. <laughs> okay, no, that's okay, so, um, so. Is the roster just the list of the members? Well, what would be what would appropriately be redacted would be their phone numbers, mm -hmm. but yeah. normally what's listed, um, Mr. Decker, is the name, their titles, meaning officers, and sometimes whether they're full time. I believe their accreditations, as well, like firefighter, EMT, mm -hmm. AEMT, so on and so forth. Okay, that's usually what's listed. That is I mean, I think that there's nothing wrong with listing that. It's good for the town to know who yeah, they no, have that, working, that what the qualifications are. Of the, I was kind of thinking about the per diem people. If they're not regular, you know, where do they come from? You know, it's like, why would they be listed? Yeah. So, or do, I mean, not to get yeah, taken out of context. You don't anyway. have to be a member um, of the department to work per diem. Right. Okay. You do have to be a member to vote. Okay. Full timers are excluded from voting. And I, I'm not sure what the standards are right now. Maybe Mr. Sherland knows with regards to if per diem members are allowed to vote. I would have to take a look at the revised bylaws. I don't think. Oh, I thought I you read it. So the roster. I have, but I don't think per diem members are counted. There's certain titles I don't think that per diem members are considered. I don't think they've been voted in to be members of the department. They're just. And how do we know if they're members of the department? So the roster. Uh, is there a? That's not a. Is that the? I mean, they would be on the roster, the roster. but so they're they, they're not. <clears throat> you know the process in which they do it, unless that changed also. Um, there is a process for becoming a member. Correct. As well. Yep. 
Yes, uh, the roster is on the website. It's got four officers and... Can you read me the officers while you have it there? Uh, Chief Matt Curry, Deputy Chief Mark Pedersen, Captain Kyle Kustra, and Lieutenant Craig Campbell. No Lieutenant Stephen Ross. So some of those names are... Did he resign? Uh, uh, is there a Ross on here? I don't see Ross. Ross on is here. on there. He's under the person. Oh, yep, there he is. So okay. it's, uh, yep, it was, I was looking the other way. Oh. His last name. So he must have stepped. So, so the, the, the officers are first name last, the personnel are last name first. Right, right. So okay, uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Ross Stephen. And, okay, yeah. Firefighter EMT. So some promotions, and it appears that there's some people that have changed their titles. Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't the officers chosen by the chief? I'm sorry? Correct me if I'm wrong, but aren't the officers? I'm not on the department now. Okay. So I don't know what's changed. Okay, but the ask. last that I knew, that person was an officer. So I, it's a moot point. I just wanted to know what the, the roster was. Thank you. Yeah, it's right under departments. Okay. And again, my term when I was speaking was for just to have the schedule posted so that people can see when full-time fire tires were working, when people were per diem were working, what do you want to call them, firefighters or names, names change, but just have a schedule saying this is what the hours to make it clear how the 24 on, 24 hours off is gonna work. Right. I didn't understand 42 probably, hours at first. Right, it would probably be a lot clearer if it, right, just listing it as firefighter one through Whatever. six. Sure. And how they play out, because that's what we're supposed to have, six full timers. Exactly, just when it gets to that point. Right, well, that's why I said we're supposed simple to laid have. out so that you can see who, when, just to work, just make it simple. And that shows when we're having pretty very simple all right and that'll be all we are going into move into our non-public session i'll make a motion to move into non-public per rsa rsa 91-a colon 3 2c and 2m uh, when we come out of non-public we'll be automatically um, closing the meeting so thank you for your time tonight, Nadia. Hold on, I made a motion. Okay. Oh, I'll, sorry. I'll second. <laughs> well, we're not going into non-public yet. Well, I finished what I was saying. I'm sorry. Then we go to non-public. <laughs> Sounds like you were. I have to say goodnight to Nadia him first. Then we okay. say, there we go. Now we'll make a motion to go into non-public. As per Tim, seconded by John Decker. Roll call vote. Aye, John Decker. Aye, John Warren. Aye, Tim Gabriel. Aye, Matt Sherlin. Thank you, Nottingham. That's it. We all approved.